Daniel chapter 5. Belshazzar, the king. Now between Belshazzar and Nebuchadnezzar, uh, because down in verse number... Verse 2, it says, his father Nebuchadnezzar. Belshazzar is not the son of Nebuchadnezzar, but the grandson. And the Bible, a, a, a son can be a grandson. A father can be a grandfather or great-grandfather. And when you look at the history of Babylon, Belshazzar was an acting puppet king of Babylon. While his father was off fighting wars, battles. And it's an interesting extra curriculum read to, with this Babylon. But meanwhile, Belshazzar at Babylon, he's the king in charge. Like in this, this country, we have the president of the United States and we have the vice president. And if the, uh, we had, uh, I think last month, President Biden went under uh, medical procedure. And while he was going underneath his medical procedure, the vice president was put as acting president in case anything happened. And this is what happened right now. The king is not able to be there at the palace, so his son's in charge. The king made a great feast. And you see this kind of feast in uh, Esther. <laughs> Vast, great. Listen, these Middle Eastern kings, when they party, if I can use the word party, they partied. I have seen pictures of these Saudi Arabian princes and royalty in the middle of a desert. They got an indoor ski where they could ski in the desert. Their malls would put our vacation places to shame. They've got money and they know how to spend it in lap. And this thousands of lawyers, I don't think there's ever been a pres presidential, and I could be wrong, thousands of people attended. <laughs> I'm not sure even the queen or the kings of, of England, thousands. To a thousand of his lords. These are people of authority. I believe in Esther there was a party for all the dilatories and all the big shots. And then he threw a party for all the common people. And drank wine before the thousand. So here's his wine. And it's probably... Good wine, grape juice, all the way up to fermented. Intoxication. You can't say that out of a thousand people, everybody's getting toxic. There's some people probably, you know, they drank grape juice. When Jesus made the water into wine, he didn't make intoxicating liquor. He made grape juice. Belsizer. So we see that there, there's a thousand people and there's drinking. Nothing new under the sun. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, I mean, it almost looks like all the different brands he's over there. <laughs> okay, serve this one. Okay, sir. I don't know. It's weird to say tasted the wine. Commanded to bring the gold, golden and silver vessels, which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple. Now go back to chapter 1 of Daniel. Daniel chapter 1, verse 2. Or well, verse 1. <coughs> In the third year, the reign of Jehoiakim, this is the first or second, king of Judah came, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part. This is the first or second time, not the third. Of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried in the land of Shinar, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels to the treasure house of his God. 
In Daniel chapter 5, verse 2, Bell said, hey, bring those things over here. And gold and silver, gold is deity, royalty. God is king. Jesus is king. Silver is the price of redemption. He also recognized the image of Nebuchadnezzar's dream. How much gold and silver shows up in, in, in Babylon? Which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem. That the king and his princes, right, the king himself, the princes, royalty, and the lords, his wives, plural, his concubines, they're wives. They're just a wife of, of another name. And there are places in the scripture where one place it says concubines, and another place the Holy Spirit says wife. It said that David's concubines that uh, that uh, Absalom laid with on top of the uh, on, to, on top of all Jerusalem the sea. When David came back, they lived to their widowhood. Well, you're not a widow unless you've been married. Concubine is man saying, well, I'm not really married to her. And God says, oh, yes, you are. You go, go tell you, go call your husband. Goes, I ain't got no husband. I know you got four of them. Well, they're concubines. Oh, no, no, they're not. Might drink therein. So what we're going to do is all of a sudden he just got to know where does this come from? Let's just bring God's stuff here and let's party with God's stuff. You know, this has happened in churches. There's a church in Groton, Connecticut, where I come from. And I won't give you the name. I forget what denomination it is, but they're, they're not Baptists. And their main theme is, let's take the Lord's house, let's have parties, let's have alcohol. And we'll have the rock and roll, we'll have the strobe lights and all that. The problem is that I read later on that the youth pastor was arrested <laughs> For serving under underage people alcohol. But do you see the Babylonian? Let's call the Lord stuff over here and let's party with the Lord stuff. And today the churches, including the Baptist churches, have taken the Lord's house and brought the world into it and party with the world. Belshazzar brought God into his world. The church today, the Baptist church, brings the world in. And this is where I call the Baptist Catholic. Is you'll find the Catholic doctrines and traditions in the Babylonian practices, which are also in the Baptist churches. So let's have this great big party in favor of God because then they brought the golden vessels. Now you just read that as a Christian. Oh, I read my I read my verses. I'm good, I'm good for the year. Golden vessels. Do you know where the golden vessels were? They were in the most they were in the holy place, not the most holy. Brass was outside. The brazen labor, the brazen uh, uh, altar. The gold was inside the holy place. These vessels were the vessels that were in the holy place. Now they're, they're sitting in, in the dining room of a Babylonian royalty and all his orgy partners in the name of God. And the problem is, it's not the name of the God of the Bible, it's the name of the gods of Babylon. Well, look at this. Our gods are mightier than your God, because look at us, we're drinking out of God, Jehovah's stuff. And no lightnings come down. The roof hasn't caved in. And we're not dead. Oh, but wait. And the thing is, we know that Belshazzar is going to die by the end of this chapter. You know why Baptists keep doing wrong? Why Baptists keep sinning? Why they keep 
get in the world of Babylon and get in the world of of, uh, of the Catholic Church and get in the way of their sins because God doesn't kill them overnight. Now, I forget their name, but the husband and wife that lied to, to the Holy Spirit and lied to God in front of Peter about, yeah, we sold so much. And they both dropped dead at the church door. And there was fear that fell on the people. Oh, and you know why the Baptist church has a fear? Because the people not dying. And the fact is, the long suffering of God is, listen, I wish you repent. I wish you get right. And people, <laughs> God hasn't killed us. So let's keep on. We're doing good. God is blessing us. And Belshazzar is not going to realize the error and sins of his way until he gets to the great white throne judgments. There was no thunder cloud. There was no lightning. There was no death until afterward. And for the Christian and for the Baptist church, I don't care about the, the Baptist church that I, I belong in. I don't mean my church. I mean the Baptists. All in one lump sum thing. Well, God hasn't killed us, and, and that man in the pulpit, God has, so he's got to do right. That's a great error because, you know what? The judgment seat of Christ is coming, and by the time you get there, oh, Lord, let me repent. Too late. You ought to repent it like Nebuchadnezzar repented while he was alive. And Belshazzar, he doesn't repent at all. We read the story of Nebuchadnezzar. He got right with God. It took two or three or four times. Belshazzar. And you, you can't take the... All right, this is... Well, this is the first time that Belshazzar... I mean, come on. His life lived to challenging God. And they drank wine and praised the gods, small G-O-D-S, of gold. Now you see why Nebuchadnezzar made that image of gold? Do you see why his head got, got into the heavens when, when Daniel said the, the, head, the head of gold is thou? Look at the order here of the gods. Gold is first. And the Olympics goes for the gold. Which their medals are not gold at all. Look it up. Look up Olympics. How much gold is in a gold? Uh, forget what they even what they call it. Medal. You find out it's not gold. Oh, look at it! And and the best performance, and we get this golden Oscar, the golden Tony, like Nebuchadnezzar's golden image. <laughs> And of silver. Man, we are looking at that dream of Nebuchadnezzar. You realize all the stuff that's around us today, including your computer, silver? We have more industrial usage of silver than we do for gold. It's even used in our fillings. A brass, that's judgment, and there were items of brass, brazen, that was in that temple too. Of iron, oh, there's that type of Rome. Remember the iron of, of the image? His legs, the north and south, the the north, I mean, the east and the west of the Catholic Church. The great iron curtain. Women lack iron and need to take an iron supplement that they are the female. F-E is iron male. The iron woman. And yet there's movies and, 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 a, and, a, and a superhero, the iron man. You got it wrong. So it's the iron woman. And they lift iron. They pump iron. Of wood. Now that wasn't in the image.
If there was plastic back then, there would, there would have been a wood, stone, and plastic. And look, look at the downfall. Gold and silver and brass and iron and wood and of stone. These would be the items. The wood would be a, a carving, an image that would be found in your local Babylonian house. As you would find wood totem poles. And whatever the, I don't know how you, those torches. We, we have them down here in Daytona Beach, Florida. With the fire. And then of stone, that would be, that. You, go to your Catholic church. You will see the idols in the imagery of the stone marble gods. In the same hour, as they are partying, God interrupts the party. And it was Belsizer's fault. Because Belsizer are the ones that say, well, let's invite Jehovah to the party. We'll get the Jehovah party favor. Maybe they're even having a birthday for Jesus, having Jesus wear a little hat. I don't know. But he invited God, Jehovah, by God's, Jehovah's party favors, the cups, the bowls. <laughs> now watch, you got to read your Bible. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand. I know what we see all the pictures. We see the hand on the wall writing. Read it, what's it say? Did it say hand or did it say fingers of a man's hand? It says fingers. So your God would be right-handed, according to the Bible. I had someone try to tell me that God was left-handed, Jesus Christ. And I gave him all the places in the Bible where it said right hand. I think I gave him all the places that said left hand. I said, figure it out for yourself. There would be the thumb and the index finger up against that wall. Now, let me ask you something. Let's read right now. I'll ask you the question. In the same hour came the fingers of a man's hand. Not a female's hand. Not a dog's hand. A paw. Not a monkey. Darwin. Westcott. Hort. And wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. Now, I challenge you to read the rest of the chapter yourself. There was no pen or pencil. You see, how you know it's so? Because my Lord Jesus Christ bent upon the ground and he wrote with his finger in the ground. And the men that were around him started leaving from the eldest to the youngest. And the, the highest of royalty, he starts, you know, getting a little antsy here. God wrote with his finger, the Bible says, the Ten Commandments. Moses came down the mountain and they were boogie-woogieing, partying, dancing, and drinking. Sound familiar? And Moses broke all the Ten Commandments there at the bottom of the mountain. Here, the fingers of man's hand, I would assume, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Where is that plaster of the wall here today? It's been destroyed. It's gone. You're not going to find it. Jesus Christ knelt down on the ground and wrote something. Everybody's, you know, he wrote down the, the law. here. We don't know what he wrote. And the Holy Spirit said, I'm not going to tell you. Like the birthday. And you know what happened after that? Men walked over it, camels walked over it, asses walked over it, and just disregarded it. And it's glad that the Catholic Church wasn't there because they would have roped off the area and made it a shrine. But the Catholic Church will come up, Jesus wrote here in Latin. <laughs> no, he didn't. You know where the places where God uses his hand? And then what happens? 
and rode over against the candlestick. Now, there's some say that's the candlestick out of the, the temple. Well, it said they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple. It could have been the candlestick. The candlestick was gold. Or come in a candlestick that was there the whole time. Either or. Upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand. What, what would be the part of the hand? It would be the fingers that wrote. The king's sitting there. And he's back to everybody. Well, what's wrong, king? I've had too much to drink. Watch. And then the king's countenance, his face changed. And he probably got everybody looking at him. He's come right in his. And his thoughts troubled him. Westcott would never believe this miracle because he didn't believe in miracles. That's the father of your modern Bible. Anything but the King James. So that the joints of his loins were loose. He's rattling. He's, he's shaking in his boots. And his knees smoke against one another. And so he's okay. He's <laughs> he is terribly frightened. And you can't say what he's frightened at what is being written. Because he doesn't know what was written when he comes to the next verse. The fact is, that over against that wall, there's the fingers and they're writing. And he doesn't even know what it says. And the king cried aloud to bring the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. I'm going to assume they weren't there for the party. Or they were off another room. You know how there's a party, some people know they all congregate in different areas of the place. And the king spake and said to the wise men, <laughs> look at the wise men. <laughs> For Nebuchadnezzar, both times they didn't know nothing. For Belsizer, they're going to know nothing. That is your wise men. <laughs> And the world goes running to him. Oh, Mr. Media Man, tell me what's going on. No, we don't know what's going on. We'll just make it up so we can make some money. Come on, Mr. President, tell us what's going on. I have no idea what's going on. I'm just going to tell you what my advisors tell me to tell you. These doctors, they got these doctors, they got a piece of paper that says, Hey, look at me, graduated from this college. Look how great I am. I am Dr. So-and-so, and I don't know as much as Dr. Pepper. How many people recently, recently, they go to the doctors, they got an ailment, and uh, we got to run more tests. Okay, what's the test say? I don't know. We need more tests. What do they say? We got to go for an exam. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You're a doctor. You don't know. I bet you got down your knees and asked the God who is the great doctor and creator of all life. I bet he would give you an answer, Daniel. And by the way, let me tell you something right now. You can watch the medical fields and the pharmaceutical companies start going downhill. Let me make a prophecy for you. You see, it's legal to go to an abortion clinic to get an abortion. But the state of Texas said, no, we're going to make it, we're going to outlaw it. And there's a thing now where pharmaceutical companies, and they're being purchased by the gallon full or tablet full or bottle full. There's a pill that women can take, a pill, and you can your baby can be aborted by those pills. I'm not talking about birth control before you have the adulterous affair or the fornication affair with that man is not your husband. I'm talking about after the fact. They got stuff that you can you can drink whatever is after you had sex and 
not be pregnant. Your medical field and your pharmaceutical companies, by the order of my God, who's holy and right, who supports life, you're going to start losing your blessings pretty soon. And don't be surprised if Russia begins to attack us or China. If God broke down Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar, you better believe he'll break down the president and the, and the, and the Baptists of America. I'm not going to say American Baptists because that's another group of Baptists. Man, if you don't want to be anybody, don't be American Baptist. If you don't want to have any Bible, don't have the American Standard Version. I wouldn't have anything out of America. I'm not American. I'm a New Jerusalem. I'm a Christian by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm just passing through. And if I had my choice, I'd rather have God send me to another country. But where he wants me, I don't like it. I'm not going to move until God tells me to move. So, on you. We'll keep on moving. Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof. So he doesn't know what's being said. Shall be clothed with scarlet, red, robe. They gave Jesus a purple. Then they took it off and gave him his own raiment. The robe in the Catholic Church Hollywood movie with a Gentile. I forget what the pastor told me. A lay pastor told me. It was a Hollywood movie I, would go, I should go watch. Oh, give me a break. I, I told, I'm not watching the Gentile Jesus. What? I don't understand what you're saying. You need to get out of the pulpit. Scarlet. You know what a scarlet robe would have you today? Oh, look at him. You'd stand out. Be like having your collar on backwards. I I, I tell him. You know, I see somebody. Uh, uh, excuse me, sir. Father. Excuse me, sir. Your shirt's on backwards. There's a bathroom over there. You can go turn it around. My son was like that the other day when to go. When to go. Uh, what are you a priest? What is it? Your shirt's on backwards. I think you're 20 years old. You still can't drink. And I looked at me and I had my shirt on backwards. So it must have been a Baptist thing. Clove with scarlet. I don't know why I said that. And have a chain of gold about his neck. Joseph was given a gold chain. Now listen, back then you couldn't go to... I don't know what they called the Walmart back then. If you didn't go to your local... Mall, you didn't go to the local jewelers, you didn't go to the local store and buy a golden chain. You didn't do that. Royalty had the chain. You look quite stupid if you were a slave and they were slaves, and then you had a golden chain. The only chain that you had was probably attached to your ankles, and that wouldn't have been gold. Hey, that's life. But golden chain, so here's this bright robe. And here's his chain. And they probably had it dangling out so everyone would see it. And shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now let me ask you something. What was Joseph? Joseph got the gold ring. I mean the gold neck. The gold chain. I get it right. Pharaoh made him the second ruler. Joseph was a greatest type of Jesus Christ, the second ruler. Go back and read that in Genesis. The Pharaoh said, bow the knee before Joseph, and only in my word will Joseph have more authority, right? All right, here's the third ruler. The man who's going to be able to interpret this dream and get the third ruler and get the, the royal chain of gold will be a type of the Holy Spirit. And the wise men of Babylon did not get it. Then came all the king's wise men. <laughs> all the scholars. 
all the all the Baptist seminaries, scholars, but they could not read the writing, nor make known to the king the interpretation. There, they, never mind. What does that mean? I can't read it. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled. He's even worse. So what does that say? And his countenance was changed before him again. And his Lord, okay, now the attendees were stunned. Now everybody at this party is like, Stone. Can you imagine how the astrologers, the Chaldees, the soothsayers, and magicians felt that moment? The tail between their legs? 